Secrets have no friends. I already heard that this morning. Well, good morning. Man, that was beautiful. Evie, that was a fantastic song. That's one of my favorite songs. Um, are you all excited about today? Because you know, if you're not excited about being in church, you get out of it exactly what you're expecting to get out of it. Just straight up that way. Okay? And that's just, that's just real. And I, I really hope that you get it. Man, I got turned on to Jesus when I was younger. And I am so glad that I fell in love with Jesus at a church that was in love with Jesus. I, uh, I've shared my testimony before. and I, uh, I, I did not... I, I had a bad church experience growing up. Uh, and it was right next door. And I, For those of you all that are first here, um, you know, it was a tough experience. And some of you all know the background of the church, but just always fighting, always bickering, always this, that, and the other. And I just... You're right, Mike. I'm not going to make it very long. I just don't like garbage in church. And I, listen, I'm just going to be straight up with you. Man, if you're, if you're a person that likes to hang on to garbage or bring up garbage, and, and man, keep that junk away from me. Don't have time for it. You want to know why? Because I've got young people right here. I've got young people right here that are starting families. Beautiful families, babies, and, and families that are growing. And I want to focus on pouring every ounce of Jesus Christ that He has given me into them so that they have the tools necessary. How many years, dear? Mary? Yes. 30 in April. 30. 30. That's a toughie. 27 of them were awesome. <laughs> Am I lying? Okay, see? <laughs> There's three of them that were not fun. Okay, they just weren't. So, you know, I'm glad that I fell in love with Jesus at a church that was in love with Jesus. It's just that simple, okay? I'm going to ask you a couple questions today, and I wrote these down. And I'm really excited about today, just to be honest with you. All right, I want you to raise your hand if you know what God wants for your life. Raise your hand. If you know what God wants for your life, raise your hand. One and a half people in this room. Do you want to? Do you wonder why people look at the church like we're lost? It's because we're lost. Let me tell you. Let me, let me just get back to my questions. I could preach on that. Hang on. All right. Raise your hand if you know the ministry that God wants for you. The ministry is, is your unique giftedness that God placed inside of you. Raise your hand if you know that ministry that God wants you to be a part of. Raise your hand. Then how can you not answer that first question if you know the second question? So that's just nothing. All right. Raise your hand if you are sensing God is tugging you to make a step of faith. In whatever area, raise your hand if you are sensing God is tugging at your heart. Oh, let me back this up. About something. Anything. doesn't matter what it is. If God has been or is tugging at your heart, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to get serious about this. Okay, we've got a little bit more participation. Okay, now, raise your hand if you would be obedient if God were to lay it out for you. If God said, Lisa, this is what I want, you'd be obedient to do it no matter what. Would you? Okay. Last question that requires hand raises. How many of you feel like, and raise your hand, that you are being faithful in the small things? The small things. I don't mean the going on a mission trip to Haiti or the small things. Kindness. Truthfulness. Honesty. 
faithfulness, love, generosity, caring, forgiveness, forgiveness giving, giving of your heart, giving of your time, giving of your money. I want to share with you a story about me. I am blessed and I am blessed beyond what I believe anybody in this room is blessed and I hope everybody in this room feels the same way. But I'm blessed beyond anybody in this room. I am a blessed man because when I was eight years old, God tugged at my heart and called me to ministry. This is before I even really realized what it was to be a, a Christian. But God tugged in my heart and, and let me know that one day, man, one day, years and years and years later, one day, He wanted me to be standing up on here talking to you. When I was eight years old, sitting on a bed, I remember it, just like it was yesterday. And trust me, it wasn't yesterday. I'm blessed because throughout my teenage years and even into my early 20s, I was a vagabond. If you don't know what that is, I was on drugs. I was drinking all the time. I was arrested. No, I was not an angel by any stretch of the imagination. The only difference between those people in that jail that have spent more than one day and me is the amount of days they spent there. I used to think I was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Back in the day, I could drink and I could get in my vehicle. I could drive anywhere. I was fine. I was fine. Until a state trooper in Alabama decided I wasn't fine. And I went to jail. I stood at the Ohio County Park one night in Building 1 where we have church at right now. It used to be a place, that, well I guess it is, to have dances all the time. And I used to be in a band that, that, that I'm a piano player, but you can see or half of one. And I used to play in a, in a country band. And as I play in a country band, all I cared about was music, 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 and, and drinking and partying and having fun. And I remember sitting out in front of that, 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 that the building and the edge of the building, there's a light that's up there. And some people were telling me, you need to come inside because it's getting ready to rain and it's lightning and I and they said I had a really bad word to say and I said this really bad word and I said and they said you better watch out God will strike you dead and I looked up at the heavens and I said I dare you and lightning struck that light fixture right above my head that's true I don't pull up out there now that I don't think about that Man, I was a rascal. I'm still a rascal. But I'm a different rascal. There's not a thing that happened or happens in my life that is not yours. I am blessed. Man, I, I met the most awesome lady that I have spent 30 years of my life with. And let me tell you one thing. It takes more than love to just be my wife. It takes a bull whip. It takes her bowing up on me. She has slapped me. She threw a chicken at me. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Well, I did throw a chicken. Okay, she threw a chicken, and it went between me and Courtney, okay? So we don't know who she was aiming at, but it hit the window anyway. You know something? Don't ever think a dead chicken can fly, because I saw it fly on the I'm a blessed man. Man, I've got three awesome, awesome... I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm so sorry. I've got three awesome children. Three awesome children that I am just nuts about. And I've got a grandbaby that I'm already nuts about. His name's Peanut Mitchell. <laughs> Close your eyes and envision a peanut. That's what he looks like. No, this one's a he. No, I said she's having that girl. This one isn't it. What does that tell you? We'll see who's right. I'm blessed. That's the point. I'm blessed. Okay? I've got amazing friends. 
And I do. Let me tell you something. Scotty, Frankie, y'all blessed me yesterday. I, I had a ball. If you want to know what three old men sound like trying to do electrical work that three young men are in shape to do, here's what it sounds like. Ouch! That's what it sounded like all day long, man. And that was just him. It was awesome. But let me tell you something. Um... It's easy to lose sight in it. <coughs> you know, um, I want more out of my Christian life than a title and a gold watch at the end of the road. I want my life to reflect Jesus. How many of y'all are focused on this thing around my neck? Hmm. How many of y'all are lying right now? <laughs> How many of y'all are wondering what in the world has he got the thing around his neck for? Elton John. Huh? Elton John, that's exactly right. B Benny and the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> but now, hang on, listen to me. See, how many of y'all are looking at what I'm doing right now? Alright, listen to this. For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son. See, it doesn't matter what I say. We focus on the wrong stuff. And let me tell you something, folks. This is what Satan does. He wants us to lose sight of how blessed we are. It's so easy to do. I've been whining and griping and complaining because I have lost focus. But I want to share something with you. Scott, you and Frank, in your own way yesterday, helped me more than you know. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I want my life to reflect Jesus. Let me back up. I can't tell you why. I don't know that moment. I, I, there's nothing. There is nothing. But I don't know, Mike, if you picked it up yesterday, the, there was just a, 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 a something different. There was a sense of something. And it changed me. In many ways, saved me. Because it helped me to refocus. I want my life to reflect Jesus. I want to be a leader that people want to follow because I'm following Jesus. I don't want you to follow me because I'm a good looking rascal. Okay? Or I'm. I don't want you, I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't want anybody to follow or be a part of this church because, oh, they're cool, they're goofy, you know, he wears jeans or what. I don't care about that. Man, I want you to know that I care about Jesus. Daniel, you're a blessing in my life, dude. I remember you in high school. You know? And I don't know the path that you have gone down. I know a little bit about it, but I know that you're here. Man, you're such a blessing to me. You're such a blessing to me. Miss Christina, you're such a blessing to me. By the way, Christina, John's walking in the door right now. Right there he is. I'm telling you, drinking water, acting like it's 10 o'clock. Wait a minute, time changed. That's what it is. I want to, I want people to see Jesus in me. So let me ask you this question. How many of you have lost focus? You see. How many of you have lost focus? <laughs> we got some there. Raise your hands high if you've lost focus. Be proud of it. Own it. 
Hey, just because it's your first time here don't mean you can't participate, okay? If you lost focus, you lost focus. Just say, I own it, man, I lost focus. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You want to get your focus back? It is real simple, but it takes honesty and it takes truth and it takes an effort upon our parts, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to read with me. Bill, if you would, please. I want you to read this passage with me. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. And he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them out into his vineyard. And about nine in the morning he went out and he saw some others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. And he told them, you go also and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again at noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. And about five in the afternoon, he went out and still he found others standing there around him. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day and doing nothing? Well, because no one has hired us, they answered. And he said unto them, you also go and work into my vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them for their wages, or pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired, going on to the first. So the workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received the denarius. And when they received it, they began to grumble. Keep that in mind. They began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us and have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Did you not agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the ones who hired last the same as I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am so generous? So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. You want your life to change? You want your life to change? It's going to be real simple today. I just got some things I want to point out to you. And I'm going to promise you, this is the recipe for a different life. Okay, everybody excited about this? Are you? A different life? I do. I got one. It happened overnight. You don't think things can change in the twinkling of an eye? I came home different, didn't I, Brenda? I left grumbling. I did. And I came home changed. Somewhere during the day, man, I began to feel different. And I was like, what's the deal? So, I want to point out a few things with you. Number one, the thing that really gets me about this is that Christ reminded me yesterday that this is what kingdom life looks like. I am not interested, and I pray that you are not interested in just coming and sitting. You know, I used to watch you play basketball. Seriously. You are the closest thing to our daughter that I ever watched. That's the truth. And that, that, that's a compliment coming from me because I'm telling you, I'm straight up and all about my little, my, our daughter. But I enjoyed watching you play. Why did God give you all of that talent and ability? Did you know that somewhere in your future... God can use that to change someone else's life. But you have to recognize life is... I'm the, there's more. I'm, I'm just looking at her right now. Okay, But there's more than just sitting in a pew. There's more than just going through life. Every one of you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Man, you have a gift, a talent, an ability. You have an absolute gorgeous outlook on life if you choose to tap into it. Look at me. You are blessed. Amen. Well, it's all the quiet and amen section is all I can say. You're blessed. Amen. All you got to do is remember this is kingdom life. I signed on for kingdom life. Man, when I came to know Jesus Christ right next door, the church that I came to hate church in, I came to love Jesus in 20, whatever, how many years later? I fell in love with a man named Jesus. And I ain't ashamed of it. 
Keep in mind, guys, kingdom life, keep this word in mind. It says, back up two slides, Billy. For the, say this word with me. Kingdom. Just say the first part. Kingdom. kingdom means there is a, and you ain't him, and neither am I. Get it? Let me tell you something about cool about a king. You know how we live in a political system where you have the left and the right now? And I don't care what you believe. You're going to have somebody that doesn't believe the same way. And this party doesn't care for this group, and this group doesn't care for this party, and vice versa. We've got all these things going on. We've got a king that cares for everybody equally. And he loves you. He loves you with an undying, unending, everlasting love. I think it's so cool that you said that. You cannot fathom. Well, God has a store from the very beginning to the very end. God has something amazing for you. And first of all, it's His love. I saw a guy yesterday uh, was trying to explain. He was giving a college speech. And in a college speech, he said, there's nine things in life that I think you need to get. Number one, you're lucky to be here. No, you're not lucky to be here. You are chosen to be here. Because in my womb, my mother's womb, God knit me together. And He said, this young man, Rodney, I don't know why He chose that name, but He did. This young man, I have got plans for him. Guess what? You're my plan. You're in my plan. Don't ask me why. You, young man, you are in my plan. I don't know why. Nicole, three years ago, you were part of my plan. You're still part of my plan. Roxy. I've called her Foxy Roxy my whole life. Oh, she's freaking right now. Okay. You're part of my plan. There's a king. And he, he cares. You see what Desi's doing right now? I don't know why she felt like getting up and hugging people. But hang on a second. Hang on. Because that's who she is. Because I think a while ago, God spoke to her for some reason. Like she needed to get up and go back and hug this and hug that. Well, whatever it was, God spoke to her. There's a king. When a king edicts doing something, we do it. That's what he tried to tell me. He reminded me yesterday, this is kingdom life. Do you know how many pastors have got to build two churches? I don't know any. I know one. This is tough. I'm just going to straight up tell you. I was 20 years younger the last time. And Scotty, Scott, we were all 20 years younger, weren't we? We were like, yeah, let's do this now. I'm like, oh, oh gosh. Can we build a little bitty one room church? A dollhouse, maybe. But there's a king. Okay? Please understand that. That's what kingdom life is about. Second thing that I really want to point out to you is that he reminded me yesterday that. He's twofold. He, there's two things going on with this kingdom life deal. Number one, the Bible teaches me in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. So, so let's just stop right there because that's, that's the most important thing. I don't know who, who in this room there, Luke 19, 10, if you want to look that up, okay? But there may be somebody in this room that does not know Jesus today. Okay? And the important thing, you don't have to move the camera. Well, she's not there to move it anyway. But the important thing is this. Okay? I once was lost. I was. I had a good life. I was a good person. Under the, you know, on the, on the face, I was a pretty good dude. If you'd have asked anybody, they said, yeah, he's, he's a pretty good guy. But the truth of the matter was, I was dying and going to hell. And I even knew it. And that's not like one of them church lines. You know how people say, oh, you're dying and going to hell. And that just makes people mad. I knew it. Because 
I knew better. And I knew who Jesus was. And I also knew that what sin was. And I knew that I was choosing to sin each and every day of my life. And I knew that the sin that I was choosing each and every day of my life had, had a payday coming. Just like we see a payday here, there's a payday coming. And I knew that payday was coming. And I knew that that payday would reward, in, would reward me with hell. And can I, can I please, can, can, can you just wrap your head around this for a second? I don't care who you are in this room. I don't call anybody. I'm honest about everything when, when it comes to this. I don't care how good you are. You ain't good enough. And neither am I. I am not worthy enough. I just shared my testimony with you. Let me tell you something right now. Brenda and I were on the brink of divorce. I have been an alcoholic, a drug addict. I have done things that I am not proud of. I am not worthy to stand up here and talk to you. But in the womb, God said, I got something amazing I want you to do because I'm going to put this thing inside of you where you don't care to tell other people about your life. And it is that testimony about your life that's going to change other people because other people then are going to say, you know what? Maybe there is hope. And yes, friend, there is hope. So he's come to seek and to save you this morning. First of all, first and foremost, nothing else. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. In other words, if you don't know Jesus this morning, that's what you're here for. And I don't know everybody in this room. I don't know what God has done in your life thus far. But if you cannot say, look at me, look at me. Everybody right here is what's important. If you cannot say beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I died right now, I know I am going to heaven. Let me tell you one thing. If I die right now, do not cry. Because if I could be come back for one minute, you don't get that minute of my time. I ain't coming. I'm going to be with Jesus. My back is going to feel good finally. My knees are no longer going to hurt. I won't even have to have this rotator cuff fixed. My life will be different. And I will see Peanut. And I'll see my family again. I'm a child of God. Man, through all my faults and failures, through all of my losing focus, I'm a child of God. Man, I'm proud of that. And I'm proud that for some reason, somehow, some way, yesterday, God showed up in my life and reminded me, son, you have lost focus. Look at the vineyard workers. That's what he called me. I asked Brenda about two weeks ago. I said, honey, remind me I'm a vineyard worker every day. Every day I start to grumble, remind me I'm a vineyard worker every day. I've got a wife that goes even one further than that. She tells me to suck it up, buttercup. You're a vineyard worker. <laughs> Yesterday I got up and I was hurting, guys. I'm telling you what, man, I'm just hurting. My... Anyway, not whining. And I said, man, I love sitting here today. And she said, well, it's not in the plan for you today. Go. She sat on the couch all day long. Guess that was in the plan for her, wasn't it? But hey, look at me. Look at me. I promise you, God changed my life yesterday. And He wants to change yours today. But once... He has saved you. Listen to this. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13, it says, For it was He who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be teachers, to equip the saints for works of ministry. Woo! Sound like Ric Flair. Woo! Didn't I? Hmm? Y'all are going, who in the world is Ric Flair? Well, if I have to tell you, you don't need to know. Okay? Saturday wrestling. There you go. He does walk. <laughs> okay. All right. I can just see Wendy doing the Ric Flair walk. So anyway. Uh, uh, fabulous one, baby. Okay. Uh, uh. Be good. Um, so God has saved you and He is equipping you for ministry. That's why I was asking you in the beginning if, if, if you knew what your ministry was. And if you do know what your ministry was, are you being obedient in it? It's real simple. How many of us are, I mean, seriously, we go through X amount of, uh, go through our life and the average man will change careers, not jobs, but careers three times. It's because we don't know what we want. But let me 
tell you something. In Christ, all things can be known. And let me tell you something. All I've got to do is lay myself out there and say, God, I just want to be used. You see, He's equipping me for ministry. You know what I already know? I'm going to build another church. Number three. No, I ain't going to go be the pastor. Of it. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all don't get off that easy, okay? But I'm going to build another church. But I'm going to build it overseas. And I'm going to invite some of y'all to come along with us. I already know that. You see, he's equipping me for ministry. The ministry that he's given me calls me to the hospital to see people. To stand up here and talk to you. <coughs> to listen. To love. To Vicky called me last night. She said, I got a weird question. And what I wanted to say is, Vicky, every time you call me, you have a weird question. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I just thinking, you know. But she's, she's all, but listen, hang on. Since, because here's what's cool. She was sitting at Walmart, getting her hair cut, talking to her stylist about Jesus. Hmm. I'm just saying. You see, that's what ministry looks like. It is that simple. Okay? Guys, I'm, I'm going to keep on going. Y'all can leave if you want, but I'm going to keep on going. <laughs> he also reminded me... Um, That lordship has different levels. Um, if you if you look through here, people work nine hours, six hours, twelve hours, three hours, two hours, and an hour. Okay, twelve hours, ten hours, eight hours, six hours. Five hours, four hours, three hours, two hours, one hour. And he reminded me that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him. You see, I got caught up in being that guy that worked 12 hours. And man, when it came time to get my pay, I was like, yes! And then I realized all I got was what I signed on for. But these people that done nothing got the same thing that I did. You see, it's easy to lose focus. Here's the deal. I am a king. And man, I love him. And he's amazing. He changes my life every day if I let him. He makes me more like him. He makes me likable. He makes me usable. He makes me fulfilled. And all I've got to do is focus on me and him. Not on you and him. Not on you and Him. Just me and Him. People are at different levels. I'm going to share with you. Turn over a little. If you have your Bibles open. I want to share something with you. Um, in Matthew chapter 13. This isn't part. It's just something I feel like we need to do real quick. Matthew 13. And it says, That same day Jesus went out to the house and He sat down by the lake and such large crowds gathered around Him that He got into the boat and He sat in the boat while all of the people stood on the edge of the shore and He said many things. And He said this. And listen, this is really super, super, super important. Okay? 
He said a farmer went out to sow his seeds, and as some scattering as he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. And some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow, but then there the sun came up, the plants were scorched and withered, and because they had no root, um, uh, they withered because they had no uh, root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And still some feed seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. Now stop. Here is what you've got to understand. And this is what the Lord reminded me yesterday. Listen to the crop results. Y'all ever heard Jeff Nally give the 92 BKR crop reports of a morning? Well, this is Jeff Nally with BKR. I'm going to give you the crop report for Jesus and how he farms. <laughs> it produced a crop. A hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. You see, this was the crop that was in good soil, but it everybody didn't produce the same crop. So the question is this, and I man, I hope you get this this morning, okay? The question is this. Are you happy with being... If you're a Christian, are you happy with being a 30-fold Christian? Or do you want to go to 31? 32? 35? 36? 40? Or do you want to work your way all the way up to where you're a 100-fold Christian? What does that mean? Man, that means that whatever God gives me to do. I am faithful to do that. I am faithful to do that. Because I asked you, how many, what was the question I asked you at first? It says this. How many of you know what God wants for your life? And like 1.5 people. Because Brenda's a little person. <laughs> no, she was like, well, sometimes, okay. I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> She will hit me right along in here. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's real simple. I promise you, it's, it is, this, is, this isn't difficult. Okay? How many of you know what God wants for you? It's real simple. He has filled you with the fruits of His Spirit. Love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Now, I want to I'm gonna floor you with something that just hit me a while ago while I was sitting here thinking about it. All of those are equal. There's not one greater than the other. Everybody I mean, I know that we say, well, if you have love, yeah, I understand that. But these these fruits, these guys, but listen to this. Do you realize that if you and I don't operate in self-control, everything else diminishes. I cannot love fully if I cannot control my anger. If I cannot control my hate. If I cannot control my whatever. I can't be patient fully if I cannot get it self-controlled. So he reminded me that not everybody's on the same level. But he also reminded me yesterday, not everybody wants to be on the same level. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. I want more. So I'm going to ask you, do you? I want you to think about this. Yesterday, or a couple days ago, Cass, you're a, you're a horse person, all right? Okay. Are y'all horse people? You're a horse person? Okay. Horse people, that didn't sound good. You know what I mean. <laughs> Are you a horse people? <laughs> Never mind. I'm not I saw on Facebook that somebody was asking, does anybody know who you know has horses for birthday parties? And I was thinking about you guys. Thought about some other people. 
But see, you don't, you don't even think about stuff like that. How can I use my passion for Jesus? I used to clean the bathrooms at East Hartford. I used to clean the church at East Hartford. And somebody <coughs> told me that I didn't need to do that. I said, why? I dirty it up. <laughs> I said, that's not right for the pastor to do that. For me to go from a 60-fold Christian to a 61-fold Christian, for me to grow in my faith, I don't care about clean toilets. So my question to you today is this. I hope that you're being reminded today that you're a vineyard worker. Okay, see, here's what's happening right now. Everybody's focused on them. And this is this is what the devil does. He he makes us lose our focus. Listen. One of these days, guys, it says, get back up one slide, Billy. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages beginning with the last one's hired. One day we're all going to be summonsed. The great foreman is going to call all of us to that great day of payment. And there's some folks in this room, all you want to hear is, okay, yeah, your name's on the book. So come on in. That's all you're interested in. But I'm just telling you, I want more. And I found a passage of scripture that I hope sums me up, and I, or I pray sums you up, and I know sums me up. On that great day, my master shells in reply, Well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. For you've been faithful with a few things. And I will now put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Do you want to go from where you are to having a faith where the Lord says, well done, my child. You have been faithful with a few things. Now, I will put you in charge of many. And I don't care who you are in this room. You're never too young and you're never too old to want that to be what our life looks like. I pray for you today that the Lord will tap you on the shoulder right now and remind you, or maybe He's been doing this the whole time, remind you how blessed you are. But how gifted you are. How many abilities that you have. And will speak to you and say, this is what you, you have poured into you from the very beginning before you were ever you were in the throne room of heaven with me and I, I had a conversation with you, Rodney, when you were peanut open. I'm going to give you a big mouth and I'm going to give you a big boldness to go with it. And I'm going to let you struggle. I'm going to let you make bad choices. 
I'm going to hold you in my hand. And I'm never going to let you go. And I'm going to squeeze you and squeeze you and squeeze you until you say, I surrender. And that day you say, I surrender. Who I have created you to be will begin. And as long as you're faithful with that one thing on that beginning day, I will put you in charge of more things. Where are you at today? Are you being faithful with the little things? The smallest things? For instance, if the church is ever going to have a revival, and if you're ever going to have a revival in your life, right now is the moment it's time to get real. And get honest. Say, man, I'm not being faithful in even the smallest areas. And maybe this is what's going on with my life. This is why I feel like I do. This is why I'm spinning out of control. This is why my life seems eternal. I love you, man, and I care about you. Oh, but you got a future. You got a future. Y'all got a future. Y'all got a future. Young folks, you got a future. You see, you're just beginning. Let me tell you one thing right now. If you young folks in this room, I wouldn't trade the garbage I've gone through and the fight and turmoil it took for me to get to this day. Because I stand here looking at you right now. And I'm proud to stand here. I am an unashamed follower of Jesus Christ. Are you being faithful with the small things? Because you can't go to 31 fold unless you're faithful with 30. So maybe you need to think on that. But most importantly, if you're shaking your head like all, all is good in my life, you're lying to yourself more than likely. If God's not giving you opportunities each and every day to share His love and to share your gifts with somebody, it's because you're not being faithful with who you're supposed to be. That's a bold statement, and I'm glad it's bold. It's a true statement. And now's the moment you can decide with it. So I'm done. And I pray now God takes over. Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you that you put a mugging on me yesterday in whatever way you did it. It was a warm, gentle mugging, but it was a mugging. And I thank you that you want more from me. But when you say you want more from me, it's because you want more for me. And you know, Lord, that being a 32-fold Christian is better than being a 31-fold Christian. And you also know that being a 40 is better than a 38. And you continually want me to climb and to grow and to grow and to experience. And the more I experience, the closer I get to you. So Lord, I lift this moment to you right now. Ask you to show up and do something amazing. Father, speak to these young people in this room right now. And I know that maybe some of them are sitting here and are thinking, ooh, first time I've been in this church. And, mm. But I pray they would realize they're not guests. They're in your house. And they belong here just as much as I do. So Father, I lift this moment and this altar up and I pray you fill it. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Please stand.